this presentation, we're going to discuss estimating partition curves using information theory. We'll discuss the conventional methods and how we can do it with information theory and we require less samples. In this presentation... Here we have a picture of a cyclone and the various parts of it are clearly identified. I've indicated a heavy particle and a light particle. The cyclone will preferentially separate the heavy particles from the light particles and indeed the larger particles from the smaller particles. The heavy particles will go into the inlet, they'll swell around, but in most cases they'll come out the spigot. Of course there's a probability, some will in fact go through the overflow. The light particle will go into the inlet, will swell around, but has a higher probability of coming out of the overflow. Of course it has a chance of coming out of the spigot. So this is a partition curve and we see that uh, this is the probability of separation of a heavy particle going to the spigot or to the underflow. Now, in order to estimate this partition curve, the general method is to actually do float sink tests on the feed and on the heavies or on the lights and identify these points. So how many particles of a particular density um, go to the to the heavy stream. Once you've got these points you can interpolate it and then you identify key parameters which we're not going to discuss too much here but it's where you've got 25% probability, 50% and 75%. These are related to um, uh, parameters used in the model called the cut point and Eckhart probability or sharpness. If Eckhart probabel is small, it's sharp. If it's large, it's fairly flat. And once this is done, you can fit a mathematical equation. That's the conventional method. But do we really need to do so many float sink tests? Well, on the feed, yes, but not on the products. There's two parameters that make up the curve. And that means, if you're familiar with mathematics, we only need to measure two parameters. The average density of the heavies and the lights is all that is required. Information theory is a methodology which is over a hundred years old which allows one to estimate the probability of separation but using information uh, rather than coming up with a model uh, in advance. It adjusts the probabilities to satisfy the constraints and that's why it's called information theory. Here we have another animation. So I'm just going to run an animation where the algorithm fits the partition curve using information theory. So here's our starting position. It takes equitable separation. And then using the information about the average density of the products, it adjusts the separation curve and it eventually goes to the actual separation curve, or at least very close to it. So conclusions. Methods are taught to mineral processing graduates where you actually have to get more information than really is required. Information theory provides the basis of using less samples. In other words, you let the mathematics do the work. Uh, thank you for listening and there's plenty of other YouTube presentations on my channel.